Hello everyone, I do hope your Saturday went well and that you are having an excellent Sunday uh, because here we have um, the fourth game we'll be showing from the ninth round of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. It's Boris Gelfand versus Levon Aragon. Uh, before we start with the game, as usual, we do have some photos to check out. So uh, here it is. It's uh, somewhere during the opening. It's a standard position, uh, Gelfand with his uh, glass of water and an espresso and uh, Aragon with a with, uh, glass of water. Uh, and a hidden thermos bottle uh, to the right of him. Uh, we have uh, another photo of a very nice close-up of Gelfand. Uh, it's like he's saying... Uh, it's like he's saying, uh, really, really, you're, you're gonna play that against me? But uh, could, could be, you know, as I do know the game, that it, that it does seem like he's actually saying that. And uh, here we have a nice close-up of, uh, of Levon uh, trying to figure out his way out of, out of the opening. So, uh, that being seen, let's see this game. Uh, Gelfand has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4 and e6. And let me just uh, have to mute the sound so you don't hear double sounds. Uh, knight to f3 and the d5. Once again, we transpose into the queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to e7. Uh, bishop to f4, and now we have castles. e3, knight b to d7, bishop to e2, uh, c6, castles, uh, and knight to h5, going after Gelfand's uh, bishop on f4. Uh, bishop to e5, and now f6. Uh, it seems like uh, this would be a very nice opportunity to grab the bishop pair, for example, knight captures, uh, but here Gelfand would actually play d captures on e5, and now th these double pawns are actually preventing uh, the knight any uh, from escaping from h5. Here black would, as g4 is a terrible threat, uh, black can lose a knight here, black would have to play g6 and uh, then knight will go to g7. Uh, but it, it's weakening the king's position and there's really no reason to do this. So Aranyan doesn't, uh, isn't interested in this. He plays f6, we have bishop to g3 and here definitely Aranyan could capture the bishop, uh, but instead he proceeds uh, further with f5. Uh, Gelfand again goes bishop to e5 and now knight back to f6. And here Gelfand goes h3. Uh, if Aryan doesn't want to capture the bishop, perhaps Gelfand will retreat it all the way to h2. Uh, but uh, here uh, Aryan does capture it. Uh, knight captures on e5, we have knight captures and knight to d7. f4, this is a, a standard theme uh, when you're playing against, uh, against this uh, defense. Knight captures, pawn captures on, on e5, and the bishop to g5, attacking the weak e3 pawn. Here, queen to d2, Gelfand defends the pawn, bishop to d7. It's very hard uh, to actually develop the light square bishop, which is often the case. In this defense, uh, Aryan's idea is a bishop to d7, to e8, to f7, and later on, maybe it, it can even come to h5 to be exchanged. Uh, so, bishop to d7, uh, rook a to c1, rook to c8, and a3 now. Uh, king to h8, we have b4, and uh, bishop to e8, uh, Aryan proceeds with his plan. Bishop to d3, now the bishop is no longer controlling h5, so bishop to h5 by Aryan will definitely be an idea. Uh, rook to c7, uh, we have knight to e2, bishop to h5, and now knight to f4, uh, attacking the bishop on h5. Bishop captures, pawn captures, and rook to d7. And this is, this is really the critical uh, moment in the game. Uh, here, uh, it does seem like Aronian solved all of his opening problems. Uh, he's preparing d captures on c4, which will open up the d-file and the queen-rook battery will be very strong here against the weak d-pawn. Uh, and here, you could play c5, close up the position and then transfer the game all the way to the queen side, maybe push a4, b5. Uh, but here, Gelfand teaches us a very val valuable lesson. Uh, instead of preventing your opponent from achieving his plan, uh, rather you should allow it. You should allow it if it doesn't work. So here Gerfand plays queen to e3, but to play queen to e3 he had to uh, look very far into the future, which, uh, which he did very nicely. Here d captures on c4 was played, we have bishop captures on c4, and now you have to decide. Do you capture on d4 and you allow bishop captures on e6? Uh, or you play rook to e8. Now you're defending the e-pawn and uh, there's really no way for white to stop rook captures on d4. So why did the gatefront play this? Uh, you can't protect it with the rook because bishop is guarding the d1 square. 
Uh, if Aronian played rook to e8, which he didn't, uh, Gelfand's plan was actually d5. It's a very nice move. And uh, now if c captures on d5, then bishop to b5 wins the exchange. Uh, and on the other hand, if you play e captures, uh, then Gelfand's plan was bishop to d3, attacking the f5 pawn. And here Gelfand said that, uh, which, which uh, you can all check out, there is an interview with Gelfand after this game. Arunar was not present in the interview as he did uh, have to do a drug test, uh, but uh, you can check it out, there will be a link in the description below. Uh, and after something like d4, uh, queen to f2, and now rook to f8, defending the f5 pawn. Uh, here, uh, Gelfand said that after rook to c5, uh, he will have more than enough compensation for the pawn, as uh, black doesn't really have any activity. Uh, he will double up on the c file, and then later on push a4 and b5. Uh, so uh, Aronian agreed with Gelfand. He did not. He did not protect uh, d6 pawn. In, instead, he played rook captures on d4 immediately. Uh, we have bishop captures, uh, and now bishop to f7. And here comes a move Gelfand had to see when he decided to go into this variation. Uh, of course, what's the idea? You want to exchange the bishops, uh, and it seems that there's no way for you to actually capture the f5 pawn, uh, because if bishop captures, then bishop to c4. This attacks your piece, and also the rook on f1, so at least you will lose the exchange here. Uh, but uh, <laughs> this was... This was exactly what Gelfand played. Gelfand did capture the pawn, and Aronian did play bishop to c4. So uh, here, here's the question: Why did, uh, why did, uh, why did uh, Gelfand allow this? Your bishop is under attack. If you move it, you're gonna get bishop captures on f1, rook captures, uh, and uh, after queen to b6. There's, uh, I mean, uh, th those are nice pawns, but uh, there's really no compensation for the exchange. It would be a winning position for, for Aronian. So why did Gelfand allow this, uh, this bishop to c4 idea? So it's an, it's an excellent position for you to uh, pause the video and try to figure out the move uh, that uh, Aronian overlooked and uh, that uh, allowed Gelfand to gain great advantage in this game. So I will give it a couple of seconds as usual. Uh, feel, free, feel free to try it. Uh, I know it's Sunday, you know, everyone's lazy on Sunday, but, you know, do, do try it. You're going to feel very nice about yourself. So, for those of you who, who found it, congratulations. You just found a move uh, Aronian missed. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, in this position, Gelfand played e6. And what's the idea of e6? How does e6 prevent black from actually capturing here? Well, if rook captures here, uh, then e7 is coming. And notice that the queen is guarding the rook on d4, but you can never allow pawn to be pushed all the way to, to e8. So queen would have to block it, and after you capture here, uh, there's really no way for you to capture <laughs> the rook on f1. And there's, there's really no good move here for black. Uh, if you capture it, uh, queen comes to d8, and now black really doesn't have a move. Queen captures is a great threat. Uh, if you capture, then it's, it's checkmate. There's really nothing to do here. Uh, so, after this e6 move, uh, Aronian saw that there's no way for him to actually capture the bishop. He played queen to d6. And here, uh, what do you do here? Here, Gerfand finds uh, another brilliant move. He plays rook f to e1. Uh, he offers his light square bishop yet again. Uh, so, what happens if you, if you capture it now? Uh, if rook captures uh, on f5, do you see how white wins this game? Uh, another excellent puzzle for you, uh, win this with white, uh, <laughs> if, if black would capture on f5. So I will give it a couple of seconds once again. So for those of you who found it, uh, congratulations, you really know how to, how to use your Sundays. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move you have to find is not e7. If you found e7, then you would not win this game, uh, because black can actually defend this uh, after bishop to f7 give up a little material, but then everything is okay. Uh, you promote to a queen, bishop captures, queen captures, and now you have rook to f8. Uh, this was the whole point of Aronian playing queen to d6, so the queen from d6 would be guarding f8. So here the material is completely equal, there's really nothing for, for white to push for here. So after rook captures on f5, the idea you had to find was rook captures on c4, eliminating the bishop that was the whole defensive idea. And after rook captures, now you push e7, and now there is no defense. After rook captures, you simply bring another queen into the game, and after rook to f8 blocking, now queen to e7. Uh, it's two queens and the rook against two rooks and the queen, a completely winning position. So, of course, Aronian saw this. Uh, after rook to e1, there is, yet, uh, there is no way to capture the bishop once again. So, rook to e8. 
Uh, it's time to block that passed pawn. Uh, e7, now comes bishop to f7 and rook to c5. Uh, we have g6 attacking the bishop, bishop to g4 and now h5 attacking the bishop once again. And here Gelfan for the third time offers his light square bishop. He plays f5. And uh, what do you do here? Well, if you play h captures on g4, then comes queen to h6 check. <clears throat> you have to move the king, uh, king to g8, now comes f captures on g6. And uh, of course, the threat is uh, queen to h7 check, followed by queen to f7 checkmate. Uh, so you have to capture the pawn. If you play bishop captures, then you get rook to g5, and there is no defense against rook captures on g6. Uh, and even if you don't capture by the bishop, if you play queen captures, then again, rook to g5 wins the queen and the game. So a very nice idea by Gelfand, uh, this f5 move. So once again, it's not possible to capture the light square bishop. Uh, king to g7 was played. We have f captures on g6, bishop captures on g6, and now bishop captures on h5. Uh, rook to d3, Aronian attacks Gelfand's queen here, and now comes queen to e5. Uh, this comes with check. There was a, a there, there was an even nicer a move that forces matters. Uh, that is queen to g5 actually. And after queen to g5, black black is just lost. Let's say queen to d4 check, king moves. And after you try a couple of more checks, queen checks, uh, rook blocks. Now you attack the d5 rook. Uh, simply bishop captures on g6. Queen captures and now rook captures on d5. You cannot capture the queen because rook will capture back. So uh, you have pawn captures and now queen captures. The pawn on e7 is protected. Uh, you're up three pawns. Uh, you're up, I mean, it's five pawns against two. So a completely winning game for white. But uh, it's interesting. Uh, here you can see how strong Elfand is. That he played queen to e5 check and that he knows that this, uh, <laughs> this end game when the queens come off the board is winning for him. So queen captures on e5. We have rook captures on e5 and now bishop captures on h5. Uh, rook captures on h5 and now rook captures on a3. So Gelfand is up only one pawn, but he knows that this is winning. Uh, rook to f5, we have rook to d3 and now rook comes to e4. Uh, rook attacks the pawn on e7, now comes rook to g4 check. King to h6 and now rook to f6 with check. King to h7 and now rook to f7 with check. Uh, king to h6, uh, rook g to g7. Uh, now the king is cut, away, uh, cut off uh, from the entire board. He has to stick all, uh, only to the h file and the pawn on e7 is protected. Uh, we have rook to d1 check, king to h2 and now rook to f1, offering a trade of rooks. Rook to h7 check, uh, king to g6 and now rook h to g7 once again. King h6 and rook to h7, repeating a move uh, a couple of times, the position. King g6 and now uh, rook f to g7. Uh, we have king to f6 and now h4. Uh, we have king to e6, uh, rook to g4, and king back to f5. Uh, king to g3, defending the rook, uh, rook to e1, and now rook to f4, check. King e6, we have h5, now pushing the passed pawn. Uh, rook captures on e7, rook captures on e7, and king captures on e7. Here, Gelfan saw that it's okay to give up the, the pawn now, uh, because now the h pawn will be unstoppable. Uh, king to h4, we have b6, preparing c5, uh, h6. Uh, rook to h1 check, king to g5, and now uh, king to e6. King to g6, uh, we have king to e5, and here rook to f5 check was played, uh, and it was in this position that Levon Aryan resigned the game. So a very nice win by uh, by Boris Gelfand, uh, a, a beautiful peace sacrifice. Well, it's not really a peace sacrifice since the bishop could never be captured, uh, but uh, a, a wonderful idea that queen to e3 move followed by e6, that's really... Uh, really, Gelfand shows that he does belong here in the candidates tournament, uh, the 2013 candidates tournament. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, uh, the black king is in check. You do have to play a move after something like king to e6. Uh, g4 is coming after black tries something. G5 is coming. And after c5, uh, b captures. Black will try to push the b pawn and perhaps the a pawn as this is this is his only counterplay. Uh, but then h7 is coming and after b4, since black doesn't really have a useful move, f4 will, a rook to f4 will win the game. So black will either capture the rook and then white gets a queen or black will move the rook and then white will eliminate uh, the only counterplay black had. So yeah, after this rook to f5 check, uh, Arunan resigned the game and a very nice win by, by Boris Gelfand. Uh, so let's see that photo one more time. So this is, I don't know at what point <laughs> this uh, this photo was taken, but uh, really, really it seems like Gelfand is, 
not very impressed with Aronen's play. And uh, as, as I don't want us to forget, we do have the standings after round 9, so let's check it out. Uh, Carlsen is now uh, the sole leader after 9 rounds with 6 points, then Aronen with 5.5 after losing this uh, game to Boris Gelfand. Uh, Kramnik uh, following with 5, then we have Grischuk and Boris Gelfand with 4.5, Peter Swidler with 4, Vasily Ivanchuk with 3.5 and, uh, and then Timur Rajabov with 3. So quite a different uh, standings uh, since uh, a couple of rounds ago. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, Gelfand versus Aronen from round 9 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Mateusz Winicki and Danny McCullough for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon uh, with a couple of nice games from round 10 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.